I want to show you how to clear out your respiratory mucus, which includes bronchitis, mucus with pneumonia, sinusitis, any mucus in your respiratory system with something better than salt. Now I've done quite a few videos on using salt to get rid of mucus and it's good, but there's something much better. And that remedy is NAC. NAC is also used in hospitals, emergency rooms as the antidote to Tylenol poisoning. The benefits of NAC go way beyond mucus, which I'm gonna cover, but let's just focus on what it does to your mucus. NAC basically thins your mucus. It makes your mucus less sticky. Salt will do that as well by absorbing water into the mucus, but NAC takes it one step further. It's a very potent anti-inflammatory. It also is a very potent antioxidant. Not only does it thin the mucus, but it also stops the production of mucus. It strengthens the little hairs, the cilia in your respiratory system that helps move mucus. And not only that, it's antibacterial, antiviral, and it can even break up something called biofilms, which are certain microbe colonies that live within the mucus that are protected sometimes by either calcium or other things. And there's three ways that you can take NAC. You can take it orally as a supplement. You can get it injected. Certain doctors do that. Or you can inhale it through a nebulizer. And I'm going to get into a little more details in a little bit on how to take it. And the reason I'm putting this NAC on your radar is because it does a lot. You can use it for many different things. Whether you have mucus from an infection or you have something called COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, where the lungs are generating a lot of mucus or even a genetic condition that involves the lung and mucus called cystic fibrosis, NAC can come to the rescue. And so let's first touch on what it does for Tylenol poisoning. When someone takes too much Tylenol, what it's gonna do, it's gonna produce this chemical that's gonna deplete glutathione. And without glutathione, your liver goes right down the tubes. You develop liver damage and the liver can literally shut down. NAC helps build up glutathione in the liver to protect the liver from breaking down. Now, why can't you just take uh, glutathione? It just doesn't work. You wanna take a precursor to help build up your own glutathione in your liver. The other very interesting thing about NAC is it helps enhance brain function because it crosses the blood-brain barrier and it can act as a very powerful antioxidant in the brain as well. So there's some pretty uh, positive research on using NAC for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, obsessive compulsive disorder, certain addictions to cocaine, marijuana, and even gambling, depression, schizophrenia. And just as a side note, if you know someone with schizophrenia, give them high doses of niacinamide. That's another remedy for uh, schizophrenia. NAC also apparently improves insulin sensitivity. So what would that mean? That means your blood sugars are gonna do much better. You're not gonna develop a fatty liver from all that insulin. You're gonna probably end up with lower blood pressure and better cholesterol profiles. So in other words, you'll have less oxidative LDL. Also, people with asthma take NAC. And as another side note with that, if you have asthma, you're going to also benefit from high doses of vitamin D3. There's even immune benefits from NAC. Certain people with HIV take NAC with good results. And even if you have a mercury toxicity, apparently NAC can act as a chelator to bind the mercury and pull it out of the body. If we compare salt for mucus versus NAC for mucus, salt is good for acute infections, like some quick results with your mucus. But NAC goes a lot deeper. It handles not just the mucus, but the inflammation behind the mucus. Also the oxidative stress, it can kind of put the fire out with that. And it can even help modulate or regulate the immune system. NAC, if we do a comparison, is just much better for anything related to mucus in your respiratory system. There's even reports that NAC is good for fibromyalgia and also improving eye problems with certain types of autoimmune diseases. And there's also things you can take in addition to NAC to speed things up. Let me just list the things that can enhance the NAC effects. If you add vitamin C or curcumin and turmeric, a probiotic can be very beneficial. Magnesium can help the airways because it's a vasorelaxer. And also you can add quercetin, which is a phytonutrient that's usually in onions. But of course, I think one of the biggest things I would add is the vitamin D. And in about 20,000 IUs, vitamin D is hands down one of the most powerful things to help regulate the immune system so you don't even get this infection in the first place. And if you do, you can overcome the infection 
pretty quick. Now, as far as the NAC dosage, I would recommend taking 600 milligrams three times a day. That would be your dosage. And the percentage of this liquid NAC would be anywhere between 10 to 20%. And you'd use that in a nebulizer to create a mist to put it into your sinuses, inhale it so it goes down the respiratory tract and into the lungs. However, taking orally also does work. You don't necessarily have to use a nebulizer. I wanted to make this video fairly short, to the point, no fluff. And since vitamin D is so important with respiratory infections, you should probably watch this video right here. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.